Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. I want to share with you my experience with this little touchscreen monitor. It's the ViewSonic 1655. You know, when I was buying this, there were several different makes and models that I could choose from. And the reason I chose this one is because in the product description, ViewSonic specifically stated that it's compatible with Mac computers. The other ones, eh, it didn't say it specifically and I don't want to jump to conclusions, so... I bought the one that did say it. And they also stated that you can download drivers that provide software for additional functionality and additional options. So I'll get into that in a little bit here, but like it's got software where you can control like, well, what two finger touch does, what one finger touch, how long to touch before it becomes a click or um, just different parameters for different ways of touching it. Now, the premise of a touch screen is when you touch it, your finger becomes the mouse and that touch acts as a click of the mouse. And that's actually all adjustable within the software, but that's the way that I have it set up here. So this here is my standard configuration, the way I have it for my music production. Um, I just keep it in front of my monitor, but I'm gonna prop it up here. You see, it's, it's a nice and thin unit and it's got this little stand on the back. So I can just put that up to prop this up a little bit better angle it towards the camera. There we go. I think you guys can see that better now. Now I want to talk about there's some things that I do like about it and there's some things I don't like about it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the things I don't like about it. This isn't specific to this make and model of touchscreen. I think these are issues that any touchscreen monitor would have. So the biggest thing that I don't like is the size of a lot of the things that you need to click on. They're just so small and my fingers are kind of big and it's hard to click on the exact right spot. Now, compared to using a mouse, like I can use the mouse and here we are on, I'll, I'll even go on this screen because I can just mouse over. This is basically serving as an external monitor. I can mouse over and use it and use my mouse with it, or I can touch it to use my finger as the mouse. But let's compare using the mouse here. If I want to click on something that's really small with the mouse, I can mouse over whatever it is that I want to click on. I can visually confirm that the mouse is in fact on the precise spot that I want to click and then I can click. So I know exactly where I'm clicking. Whereas with the touch screen, I can't have that visual confirmation beforehand. I just got to go and touch it. And as soon as I touch, it performs the click. And I got to just kind of hope that I actually hit the right spot but it's hit and miss. Sometimes I get the right spot, sometimes I don't. And it's it's annoying. I usually just use the mouse, mouse over and click whatever it is with the mouse. I find that a lot easier. For instance, I'll give you an example. So the DAW that I use is Logic Pro and I can open up the mixer window and put that on the touchscreen monitor here. So now I've got access to all my different plugins and parameters and everything here. So let's say I wanna open up um, on this channel here um, this is lead vox, lead vocals. So if I want to open up this here EQ, I just got to click it in the right spot. There we go. I click the right spot. And um, I mean, I can use it for sure. I can definitely adjust parameters really well. It's, you see the size of these buttons, these buttons are nice and big, so they're easy to touch and easy to use. But like, if I want to close this window, see that little X up there, that's a little bit tricky for me to get. Boom. So, I mean, I got it that time. It's like, you know, I probably get it like 75% of the time. I can usually hit it, but that 25% is still pretty annoying. I mean, with the mouse, I get it 100% of the time. For instance, I have a just an iPhone here. And if I bring up um, like just a, my, my keyboard on the iPhone, um, let's compare the, the size of the keyboard on the iPhone with the size of some of these buttons here. So like look at the size of the buttons on the keyboard and the size of the mute button here, like it's, it's less than a quarter of the size of these buttons. So these buttons are easy to hit, right? Like I can type whatever I want. And even like the buttons on the iPhone, I still, you know, sometimes hit the wrong one and they're quite a bit bigger. So another thing that I find a little bit annoying, and again, this is nothing against this specific model. This would be with any touch screen. Um, and this is kind of a no brainer, but it's one of those things I didn't realize until I started using it. I mean, if I would have thought about this beforehand, I would have realized it, but like, the fact that in order to use it, I have to touch it and then my finger is in the way of seeing the monitor. And sometimes there's parameters or there's information behind my finger that I can't see and I, I would like to see it. For instance, um, if I bring up a plug in here, um, I'll bring up uh, the de -esser. See, I missed it. de -esser. I missed it again. de -esser. come on. 
there we go. There's my de -esser. Okay, so you see all these like little knobs here and they have the value above them. So for instance, my frequency is at 7,000 Hertz. Let's say I want to bring that up to 8,000 Hertz. So I touch it and I move my finger up. Um, see, it didn't even work that time, but I couldn't see. As I move my finger up, it's blocking the numbers for me to visually confirm what I'm doing. So like, I can't even tell if I'm doing anything. Um, because my finger's in the way, it's blocking my view of the dial and it's blocking my view of the number. Whereas with a mouse, I mean, it's a piece of cake. I can just click on it. I can see the dial moving. I can see the numbers moving. I can see everything there. With the mouse, I can hover over things. You can put the mouse over top of that and leave it there to hover and that opens up the secondary menu. With my fingers, I can't hover over something. I mean, it's either touching or it's not. So, um, yeah, so I can click that click output to bring up the menu. It worked for me earlier, but it's not working for me now this time. So, and I can't, I can't hover over that with my finger. So I'm just going to cheat and use my mouse. And the last thing that I would say kind of annoys me with this monitor. And now this is specific to this monitor. I don't know if other touch screens will do this, but it seems to go to sleep after a while. I don't know quite how long, half an hour, an hour maybe, but if I don't touch it for a while, then it becomes unresponsive and I have to touch it again. And then it has to kind of wake up. It takes like five or 10 seconds or so to wake up and then it'll be responsive to my touches. And the reason that's really annoying is because I don't actually use the touch screen functionality very often. And then the odd time that I do want to use it, it doesn't work anyways. I still have to just drag my mouse over and do my adjustments with the mouse. So those are the cons. Now the pros, there are some things that it does quite well. First of all, like the color profile and the display resolution and just the overall picture on this display is really good. So I'll give it a big thumbs up for that. Also, the touch screen functionality does work pretty good as long as I'm clicking on things that aren't really small. For instance, um, I can close this out. Boom, closed, boom, closed. Yeah, like I can, I can use this little mixer here. I can slide these um, slides up and down. Now I can't touch multiples. Like I can't take two fingers and slide two of them up and down at the same time. Um, you know, like on a real mixer, you can grab, well, I mean, 10, if you're that coordinated, just, you just can't do that with this. It recognizes a two finger touch as a swipe. So even though I can't slide two sliders up and down at the same time, I can use two fingers to touch and I can swipe and go side to side within the project. I mean, it's exactly the same. So I've got my mouse on there. It's exactly the same as side swiping with the mouse. And it works quite intuitively. It's, it's very responsive and it works good. Let's say I want to bring up this EQ here. So I, like, this is fairly large. I can click on that. No problem. Boom. There's the EQ. And you know what? I can instantiate bands really easily and I can move them. Um, I can actually like with big stuff like this, I can actually work faster with my fingers than I can with the mouse. For instance, I'll turn these off. If I want to turn all these bands on, if I do that with the mouse, it takes me a little longer than if I do it with my fingers. For instance, I'll give it a go right now. Bring the mouse over there. Click, 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 click. There we go. Turn them all on. I'll turn them off. There, that's about as fast as I can do it with the mouse. Now, if I want to do it with my finger, boom, 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 boom. It's actually a lot faster. And one of the things too that I like, and this is a setting within the software, is that I can be working with my mouse on the main computer monitor and I can touch something here and it only brings the mouse onto this monitor while my finger is touching. As soon as I release, that mouse comes back here. So there's my mouse cursor right there. When, as soon as I touch something here, that mouse cursor disappears. It jumps to this screen. As soon as I release, there the mouse cursor is. It jumps back. I can keep something on this screen that I use once in a while. And actually, I keep my monitor controller. I keep my master volume knob on this screen as I'm working. So I'm just doing my work with my mouse up there. And if I want to change the volume really quick, I can just touch this screen real quick, do my volume change, and then my mouse doesn't move. My mouse stays in the same spot. So I find that to be quite convenient. So the software it comes with for controlling it, it's not very intuitive, but it does give some pretty flexible tools. I'll show it to you. All right, so here's the diagnostics. Let's give this a try. So I got to draw this pattern 
from left to right and clockwise. So left to right, ignore tip switch enabled, interactive touch. Um, touch behavior, more responsive. I, I didn't find a significant difference messing around with these a little bit. Uh, touch. So here's a lot of the different options. Two finger drag action. You know, it's got all these different actions that it can perform with different touches. My conclusion on the unit is I don't actually like the touch screen functionality. I, I think this is a fantastic touch screen. It's nothing against ViewSonic or this particular model. It's more that just a touch screen in general doesn't quite work for me because of the cons that I had mentioned. I find it easier to just use it as a normal external monitor. I just mouse over it, do whatever I gotta do, and then I mouse back. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down there. Also, I want you to know that I'm uploading an entire audio engineering course right here onto YouTube, available to you for free, and it's structured so it starts with the basics and has lessons that build on top of each other. So yeah, subscribe to the channel and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.